One of my favourite books on my shelves here in my office in South London is this one by Matthew Said, Bounce, The Myth of Talent and the Power of Practice. Uh, no prizes for guessing what the core idea of the book is. Um, but the reason I picked up the book was because I saw Matthew speak. He came along to the London chapter of the Professional Speaking Association some years ago now, and I've been a member for a little while. And what he said that day just blew my mind. I, I think not because it surprised me as an idea. Uh, growing up uh, as a boy, um, I was introduced to the idea of practice being important rather than just natural talent um, by my parents. And I think in particular, I remember my father, um, who was himself was a very, very good sportsman. He, he uh, played rugby to a serious level as a schoolboy, played England schoolboys. He played with and also against uh, Gareth Edwards uh, in his school days. And, uh, and in athletics, it specialised in triple jump and got to be really quite good. It, it, I think he trained with Lynn Davis, knew Lynn Davis well, who of course got gold in the Olympic, Olympic Games in Tokyo in the 60s and got to a point my father was there or thereabouts 17 metres on a cinder track in the triple jump. I mean, I look back and think, <laughs> respect, you know. He was number three in England. I think it was just the top two that went to the Commonwealth Games, and my dad just missed the Commonwealth, but such is life. Anyway, the point is this. As a boy growing up, I also took an interest in rugby and in athletics, not to uh, that kind of level, but certainly to a good county level. And I always remember him saying, Simon, if you want to get good, you've got to train, you've got to practice, you can't just turn up and expect to be fab. You know, natural talent will make you okay at a, within your school, but within your year group. But if you want to get really good, it won't be enough. And uh, now, as a, as a boy, frankly, I was involved and interested in lots of things. Yeah, you know, I was interested in sport, yeah, but I also really enjoyed drama. I enjoyed um, I just, just kicking around, just having fun, and I enjoyed my studies. I took my studies seriously. So uh, I never really got sufficiently single-minded to pursue sport to an elite level, a good level, but but no more than that. Um, and that was a personal choice. I was quite keen on the idea of being a bit of an all-rounder and, and trying different things. But I, so 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 I suppose I've been exposed to the idea that that. That, that practice is important if you really, really want to excel. But what Matthew Saeed did on that talk that day was put that in a much wider context. In particular, I remember his comments about Mozart, of course, child prodigy, uh, so goes the traditional view, you know, Mozart composing, you know, pieces as a young child and the aristocracy raving about him before he was even a teenager. Um, and if you've seen the film Amadeus, of course, then uh, that's written in, in, in written writ large in that film, the idea of the, the wonder kid. But, but uh, Saeed's comment was to say, look, what Mozart had was not so much exceptional talent, but an exceptional upbringing, because his father was at the cutting edge of... Um, music teaching at that time and put his son through a, if not unprecedented, certainly very unusually intense and rigorous program of practice as a boy, such that by the time he was a teenager, Mozart had done more hours of piano practice and music practice than many practicing adult musicians. And when compared against those adult musicians with a similar amount of practice time, you could argue that Mozart wasn't actually that exceptional. Of course, you know, what he then went on to achieve in his later years, in his 20s and 30s, of course, is a separate point. But nevertheless, um, I think that the idea that, that someone as outstanding, excellent as, as Mozart, for whom it's so easy to assume was just blessed with some magical gift, uh-uh, actually he worked ferociously hard. And, and of course, there are plenty of other examples in the book in terms of sport, in terms of uh, business, uh, all sorts. To me, I found that to be a hugely inspiring idea because it, it, it was a full-blown analysis of just how important it is to really practice. And, and I have to say, over the last decade or more that I've been working in the public speaking world, professional speaking and as a coach, facilitator and so on, time and again I've seen this. I've just completed a, a, a big suite of, of coaching work for a client and, um, and we're in lockdown days, of course, so a lot of this presenting, all of this presenting has been done to camera. For sure, those that put the most work in, absolutely it shows in the quality of the output. Uh, and over the years, working with speakers, for example, who start out really nervous, well, if they put the work in and they've got a good attitude, for sure, they will project more confidence. They will gain confidence from practice and from proving to themselves what they're capable of doing. Um, and, and it's a question I'm often asked in sessions is, you know, public speaking, is it, a, is it something you can get better at or is it just a natural gift? Unequivocally, I can say it is a skill, not a gift. 
And, and if you don't believe me that practice makes a difference, well, pick up Saeed's book because, um, because it's an absolutely compelling read and I heartily recommend it. So there's some food for thought for you. It is Monday the 16th, I think, of November 2020. And I'll be back again soon with another video, with another topic. I'm not sure yet whether it'll be a book or a thought or some other piece of memorabilia. But speak well and speak soon.